Tech, a strong defensive team. They've held eight opponents this year under 30% behind the arc. Shot clock winding down, three on the timer. Gibbs lets it go. Early offensive rebound and an easy putback for Juwan Durham. Great defense to the last five seconds. That's why you hear coaches talk all the time. Finish the possession. Great example right there. For Georgia Tech coming off a strong 19-point win against Boston College. Played Duke tough here in this building. Trying to keep things rolling right now. Three and three in ACC play. Moses Wright, their go-to guy, comes up empty. I like Josh Pashman going right inside to Moses Wright. Shooting 55% from the field. He's got to get continuous touches in this game. Notre Dame has been such a curious case. They've played so well. Statistically, they're a coach's dream. Best assist to turnover ratio in the country as Georgia Tech turns it over there. Fewest fouls committed in the country. Mike Bray told us, I am doing everything I can. They're doing everything I'm asking, but we can't close out games. A disappointing one and four record in league play. And it's something different every game. Hasn't been one particular problem. It's been little things. And as he said, we've been in a lot of close games. Alvarado fouled hard by Prentice Hub. That's his first. You talk about the identity of Mike Bray. It always starts with handling the basketball again. Best assist to turnover ratio in the country. It just not has not converted to wins. It's been somewhat sometimes outside shooting. A little bit of defense. Sometimes it's the offensive glass or the defensive glass. Still trying to tighten up all the phases of his team. Three rattles in and out for Jordan Usher. But one thing Mike Bray can depend on is very few mistakes and not a lot of fouls from his team. Notre Dame shooting poorly from three. Mooney missed two, Fluger missed one. Usher takes it hard to the hole, can't get the finish. Bank second chance, but he cashes in. And somebody has to help John Mooney on the glass. Mooney, the best rebounder in the country at 13.9 per game, but he's got to get some help on that defensive glass. And Georgia Tech is going to have to beat Notre Dame because Notre Dame does not beat themselves. Lob to the rim. Durham improvised in the air but couldn't put it home. Inside to Moses Wright. Backing down Gibbs. And a blocking call is the foul. Georgia Tech likes to play a physical game. They do a great job on the glass. They block shots. Banks catches it. Quick gather. Right back up. 6'10 with a 7 foot 5 inch mm -hmm. wingspan. He didn't mess around when it put it up strong. Straight to the paint again. And Moses Wright, easy to. If you look at James Banks on the offensive rebound and right, they catch it clean and they go right back up quick. Luger, great dish. Mooney fouled on his way to the rim. Tech foul charge to number one, James Banks. Is first. And James first Banks is an outstanding shot blocker. John Mooney but he's got to learn to two. keep himself down, put his hands up, not leave his feet, and don't bring your hands down. Sometimes players like to go for that pump fake that Mooney put in. And that caused the foul. A simple little fundamental shot fake created that foul. You know what makes me laugh about Mooney? When he shoots a three off the dribble, he's got a hitch in his shot from the foul line. It's less noticeable. Yeah, it's a, it's a cleaner shot right. from the free throw line. From the three-point line, looks a little bit like Charles Barkley's <laughs> golf swing. It, it's got that fast motion, then the hitch, then the follow through. He makes both. So we're even at four in the early goings between Georgia Tech and Notre Dame, both teams in big need of an ACC win. And Notre Dame now, a little 2-3 matchup zone. And Moses Wright called for a travel. And Mike Bray told us today at shoot-around, you're going to see some zone in this game for a lot of different reasons. One of them, we have to save our legs. Not a deep team, Notre Dame. Wants to keep it fresh. Long three from Juwan Durham goes begging. Prentice Hobb into the first row. And Notre Dame typically 
a Mike Bray team doesn't play with a lot of pace, but he said with this particular team, we want the 2-3 zone so we can speed it up, get a stop, and get going quickly offensively. Yeah, they practice with a 20-second shot clock, which is really smart because it gets his team to function quickly and in a real game still have 15 seconds left to play with if they need it. Third turnover early for Georgia Tech. Gibbs steps into a three. He can't hit it. Offensive rebound. Mooney. Jump ball was called before the basket. Georgia Tech has the possession arrow. John Mooney already with three rebounds, averaging nearly 14 most of the country with a double-double tonight. He'll tie Luke Heron Gody for 11 straight, the most in Notre Dame history. How about a three for Michael DeVoe? The sophomore needed that big time, just two of 12 from three in the last three games. But 41% overall for the season. Well, a sharpshooter. Before that cold streak, 2 of 12, he was the best of the ACC from deep. Alvarado called for the foul of reach, but Georgia Tech at early lead. Tech foul charge to number 10. Mike DeVoe sitting in that corner. The lefty knocks it down early. That's good for Georgia. Donovan had just taken the Oklahoma City Thunder job. Mooney needed a home. Bray said if he's good enough for Donovan, he's good enough for me. Brought him to South Bend to the rest is history. Nice quick evaluation by Mike Bray. And sometimes that's what it takes, a recommendation from someone that you respect in the business, a little tip, a little endorsement. John Mooney went on his visit, he told us today, and he absolutely loved it at Notre Dame. Went home, committed the next day. And now he's the nation's leading uh, rebounder. How has he developed from, you know, just a kid from Orlando, Florida, the one of the best board getters in the entire country? Well, I wouldn't say he was under-evaluated. He might have been under-appreciated in the high school game. Uh, Billy Donovan certainly appreciated him as he grabs his fourth rebound. And what does it say about Mike Bray's relationship with Billy Donovan that he could have called anybody in the country and he sent him to Notre Dame? No question about it. The respect that Billy Donovan had for Mike Bray with that quick phone call once Billy went to OKC. And I think that says it all. Mike Bray and his staff do a great job of evaluating prospects, their academics, their basketball, and them as a person. It's a special fit at Notre Dame. They've had some top-ranked classes over the years. Notre Dame struggling offensively right now, just two of 10. Another offensive rebound from James Banks, but he cashes in for two. And Banks needs to beat up Notre Dame on the glass. They have an advantage when it comes to rebounding. And they got to take advantage of what they do well. Dame Goodwin has come into this game, the sophomore with two baskets since he's entered. Simple, easy take from Michael DeVoe. People think he's just a three-point shooter, but he could do it all. He can pull up. He can actually pass the ball. I'm a little surprised of his assist to turnovers. They're in the negative. DeVoe is a great passer. Montverde Academy, a powerhouse in the high school game. Yes, he was a standstill three-point shooter. Developed that pull-up as well. Back door was not open, so Alvarado resets. Looking for help, finds it with Banks, can't get the finish. Great defense from Mooney. And a great team defense by Notre Dame. Everybody held their ground. They sat down in their stance, moving their feet. The better defense they play, that leads to their quick offense. Mooney fires a three, misfires. I like to see John Mooney start inside out with his shooting. Same goes for Juwan Durham for Georgia Tech. These bigs sometimes are trying to show people they can shoot the ball. They can dominate the game eight to 10 feet from the basket. Mooney rips down that rebound. He's 0 for 3 from the floor, but in the rebounding department, he's already got a quick five. Gibbs, a lot of contact, nothing called, did not matter, nothing but the bottom of the hoop. Tied at 11, Mike Bray 
was trying to say my guy got taken out of it didn't matter he still made the three but a lot of contact on that shot a ton of contact on that shot let's take another look yeah, Gibbs open for the moment Alvarado seems like he with the body the, yeah backed his way in with the body shot was released I'll take that good no call Inside everything but the finish for Evan Cole. Notre Dame pushing the tempo. Nate Lashewski count it plus the foul. Notre Dame talked about getting out in the first six to eight seconds in transition. They push it up the floor. This is 6'10 sophomore. Smooth to the basket. Just the instincts of seeing the lane driving hard. Finish that with concentration. Young man played his prep basketball at Northfield Mount Hermon in Massachusetts. Played for an outstanding coach by the name of John Carroll. He's got the school three point record at Northfield Mount Hermon. Trying to give the Irish a three point advantage and does. His dad was a player at Wisconsin. His sister Abby played at Wisconsin as well, so a little basketball in that family. It's a 6 nothing run for Mike Bray in Notre Dame. Strong hedge. They're really getting out on ball screens, Notre Dame. Jordan Usher hesitates, goes to the rim, but comes up empty. But he was off balance, and he's shooting that fading away. Rex Fluger, solid on the D. That has been his calling card and what has been a terrific career in a Notre Dame uniform. Here's Fluger. What Great it. passing. Leads to a three. No good, though. Going to see Notre Dame play out of concepts. Space the floor. A lot of drive and kick. A lot of back cuts. DeVoe into contact. Blocked, but stayed with it and puts it up and in. Mike DeVoe, off the court, he's a really nice young man. He's got to be a little bit more aggressive with his game. When the ball is in his hands, he's got to think shot or drive. A rare turnover for Notre Dame. And we've got a great back and forth affair in the ACC so far tonight. Mike DeVoe with a hard take. Gets a block. Shooting is worse than he has all season. At one point, he led the country in three-pointers made, but it really fallen into a slump. But tonight, he's broken out of it. Seven points out of Georgia Tech's 13. Well, he came out of high school at Montverde Academy. They went 36-0 his senior year. Freshman year at Georgia Tech, shot 39% for the season from three, shooting 41% now. You know the jump shot is there. It could be a little bit of confidence with Mike DeVoe. Sometimes he's feeling it, and sometimes he's a little unsure of himself before he shoots it. I mean, confidence, it's hard to defend confidence. And you know when you have it as a player. Foul called off the ball. Shot clock resets to 20. Georgia Tech, they have really hammered the paint tonight. Their 13 points, 10 have been scored inside the paint. Do you think that's the recipe if you're gonna beat Notre Dame tonight? Yeah, because you're not going to beat them from the outside. Or there's most likely, you're not going to beat them from behind the arc. Georgia Tech, not a good outside shooting team, and they really struggle with their turnover game. That's their fourth of the night. So if you can't outshoot somebody and you're going to make offensive mistakes, you, you've got to win the game with your defense and in the paint. Deep three for Prentice Hub, and the sophomore buries it. Prentice Hub has been hot in his last few games. Averaging 18 points a game in the last three. Another loose ball. This time the Yellow Jackets keep it. DeVoe, deep three, trying to answer. Does not go, and a foul called on the rebound. Notre Dame foul, number 14. Nate 14 foul. Back to the 
Prentice Hub, you know, 62% of his shots are from three. So the scouting the, report the says, yeah, that shot? scouting report says you've got it. When you think you're close enough, you got to get closer. Prentice Hubs, Prentice Hub, excuse me, is a guy who's going to release it quick. Into Moses Wright. This time steps back and leaves it short. If you're Moses Wright, you, you never want to step back. You want to step in with that body. Mooney working on right. That's been the matchup to watch tonight. Prentice Hub lost the handle. Alvarado right there. But a foul called. Thought that was going to be a jump ball instead of foul called against the junior Jose Alvarado. You cannot jump on somebody who's already down on the floor with the ball. This is a good call. Hub loses it. Alvarado goes for the ball, but he jumps on the man. That's the right call. You're saying he restricted Hub from getting the ball, and that's why the foul was called. Yeah, and, and that's, that's the way the rule reads, and, and I like the way it was interpreted on that possession. Mooney, tough take. Can't get the finish. ACC Network College basketball coverage continues Saturday. Two great games. First, one Eastern time, ninth-ranked Florida State taking on the Miami Hurricanes. And then our primetime matchup, Georgia Tech taking on the reigning national champs. Virginia, both games right here on the ACC Network. Florida State just, they beat you up, and they beat you on both ends of the floor. And they're up on Virginia by two right now. That game on ESPN2. They're so athletic on the perimeter, and they really can put points on the board. I had a chance to call their game early this season. You don't want to play them if you get into the NCAA Jump tournament. Ball. Jump ball, great defense. A double team came in on Mooney. Moses Wright, James Banks were there. That's quite the dynamic duo, duo down low for Georgia Tech. And that's the strength of Georgia Tech. Nice by Banks. He waits. You know, if they're not blocking shots, they're changing shots, and they help your field goal percentage defense, which has been very good for Georgia Tech this season. Inside to Durham, working on Banks, turns around, puts it up and in. Jawan Durham up to four points, and he's not afraid of that dynamic duo. They could go right into the teeth of him. Now, he's got some length. 6'11", transfer it in from Miami. He's got short game skill and he demonstrated that on that last possession I like the way Notre Dame is guarding in this game you know that's not the strength of their team but they know they have to do it to get on the offensive end Mooney swats it from behind and Notre Dame comes up with it it's really good team defense right now by Notre Dame the follow flush, perfect position for Jawan Durham. And if you look at the clock, Jay, they make the stop, they push it down the other end quickly. Largest lead of the night for the Fighting Irish at six. Right, driving on Mooney. Great defense again. Gets his own rebound, though, and that time puts it up and in. That's the tenacity that Moses Wright has to play with. Stay near the basket. Don't fade away. Bring it to the rim. Fluger. Threw up a bomb, could not connect. Really deep three, and they still had 10 seconds left on the shot clock. Price, a transition triple doesn't fall. But that's the pace that Notre Dame wants to play with. They're good with shooting quick as long as they're open. Here's T.J. Gibbs. 
gives it up. Goodwin a three. That's good. Dane Goodwin off balanced and he drills it in Notre Dame up by Savage. Georgia Tech takes a timeout. Josh Pastor calls a timeout, and guess what? He said, look it, we're down seven, we're okay. Let's not be selfish and hold the basketball. Don't let the ball stick. Our offense is gonna lead to our defense. An extremely positive huddle, encouraging huddle by Josh Pastner. Not really talking about the score, just talking about what they had to do offensive concept-wise and get the ball inside more. There it is. So you go inside the huddle, he draws it up, and then boom, execution. It's exactly what he talked about, Jay. He talked about moving that ball side to side, get that player movement, and let's feed the post. We're beating them inside. Let's not forget about that. Now, Just a real simple, positive huddle. Points in the paint has been the name of the game tonight for Georgia Tech. 14 of their 19 points have been in the paint. See Notre Dame now right after that last possession. Now they're in the zone. As soon as Georgia Tech scored on their man offense, Mike Bray changed it up. Deep three from Jose Alvarado, and he drills it. To back turnovers against a team that does not turn the ball over that leads to points. Jose Alvarado, top of the key, splash. Young man played his high school ball at Christ the King in New York. He won a city title and a state championship for Joe Abatella. Joe told me today, the most competitive player that I've had in the litany of players from Christ the King. He has been red hot as of late. Spearheading this mini comeback from Georgia Tech. Moses Wright, hard to the hole, rolls around the rim, but does not drop, and it's Notre Dame basketball. Josh Pastner mentioned to Moses Wright, hey, take it into the basket. He has the last couple of possessions. When he does, good things happen. You know, you're not gonna score every time. You're not gonna get fouled every time. But I can tell you something, if you fade away, you're not going to get anything. Notre Dame, the best assist to turnover ratio in the country so far. Only four assists and four turnovers. Georgia Tech has ramped up the defense. Another stop there. Yeah, that shot was contested. Reason for the miss. You put a hand in somebody's face, that lowers the percentage. So they give it right back the other way. Off the leg of Moses Wright. Tech substitution number zero, Michael DeVoe. Notre Dame starting their offense a little bit further away. Georgia Tech trying to take that space away. Alvarado called for the foul. That's his third. If Georgia Tech is going to continue to pressure the ball that far away from the basket, Notre Dame has to start to think about putting it on the deck because they're going to be some huge driving lines. Doubleheader tomorrow in the ACC women's basketball. First six Eastern time, top 15 battle, ninth ranked NC State taking on Florida State, then at 8 Eastern, Duke and Notre Dame, both games right here on the ACC Network. Great pump fake, steps into it, Dane Goodwin can't connect though. So fundamentally sound, Notre Dame. The shot fakes, the jab steps, they beat you with their IQ. Bubba Parham, hesitation, and he knocks it down after the Josh Pastner timeout. It's a 7-0 Yellow Jackets run. I'm telling you, Jay, that was a positive huddle. A lot of encouragement by Josh Pastner. He knows his team. He understands the mindset of his team. Hub a contested three, and it goes begging.
crossover. Everything but the finish for Bub Bubba Parham. Officials in front by a little Georgia Tech answers and vice versa. Well, each team is trying to play to the strength of what they do best. And Georgia Tech on their run, they've scored in the paint. And they've done a good job on the glass. And that's where they have to stay true to themselves. Notre Dame, they have to shoot it better. They're getting the looks they want at times. And at other times, Georgia Tech taking those looks away. Close games have been frustrating for Mike Bray this season. Their last four losses have combined 11 points. Great pass from Rex Fluger. Goodwin a three. He hits it. Dane Goodwin, a big time triple. And Notre Dame back up by three. His dad, Damon, all time winning his coach at Division III Capital College in Ohio. And a very good player at Dayton himself. His son has come off the bench and the sophomores provided 10 points. But I don't think he can shoot it like his son. Inside to Banks, working on Mooney. Double team comes. Two seconds, has to let it fly. Bubba Parham comes up empty. But you're happy with that possession by Georgia Tech. The ball moved. Fluger, maybe the easiest shot of his career, and he can't get it to go. Almost too easy for the fifth-year player. He knows it, too. He's going my bad. But look at the smile. See, Rex Fluger knows he's going to make up for that somewhere down the line. That's one in the playground. You can't believe you're that much open. Well, nice out-of-bounds play. Notre Dame basketball. And John Mooney. Not a big-time shot blocker, but an inside presence. He's up to seven rebounds, leads the country with near 14. But he did a nice job on that defensive end. Trying to get an offense going for Mooney, has yet to hit a shot tonight. Look at the space. Blocked! Jordan Usher got all of that one. DeVoe got Gibbs up in the air and draws the foul. See, Georgia Tech, they're so alert defensively. Jordan Usher gets beat. He comes right back into play. Watch this. It's a chase down block. And he gets beat off the bounce. And he still has the wherewithal to say, you know what? I got to get back. Not only does he get back, he blocks it. That, that is diligence on the defensive end. Coming up on the State Farm Halftime Report, we'll take a look around the ACC, tell you what happened to the game before us on the ACC Network out at the Carrier Dome, Syracuse Boston College. They give you first half highlights of our game tonight. Two point advantage for Notre Dame under two minutes remaining in the first half. They're running a lot of motion into a ball screen. You see the lane wide open. And that's for driving purposes. We got five guys behind the arc right now for Notre Dame. A lot of handoffs, ball screens. Three seconds on the shot clock. Mooney, tough. And he can't finish. Tell you what, that was tough defense by Georgia Tech. Great pass, Evan Cole does not roll down. But the junior will take two. Georgia Tech with some solid execution on offense. It's a simple ball screen. Usher penetrates off of it. Can't finish, but they ran the ball screen. They brought Usher up. They lifted him from behind. He had a great driving line. Since you were in Josh Pastor's timeout at the under eight, their defensive intensity has really ratcheted up. And I think a lot to do with that has been their offense. When you score the ball, you get a sense of intensity, little pepper in your stepper. You give the Network Weekly Basketball Show at Sunday, 8 o'clock Eastern time. They'll give you the highlights from last week and also get you primed for the week to come. A great group. Oh, the best. Carlos Boozer, Malcolm Huckabee, played for me at Boston College. 
Jordan. How is he as a player? Oh boy, he never never saw a shot he didn't like. <laughs> And he was a heck of a defense. He's the best defender between Cornette, Boozer, and Hancock. Okay. That's for sure. But you wouldn't give him the last shot out of that group. No, I would. I would. He became a better shooter as he got older. But he was a great defender. He was our stopper. We've had a great first half here in Atlanta. Back and forth affair. These two teams playing a really tight game. Five seconds separate the shot clock and the game clock. And you see Josh Pastner. He's going to use all of this shot clock. If it doesn't go, he's got a chance for the offensive rebound. If it goes, they get back quick. No one stepped up to defend Parham. It was the right decision. He missed it. But a great rebound by Evan Cole. And he's fouled and will get two from the line. Evan Cole gives them some good minutes up front to rotate in with Moses Wright and James Banks. Big body kit, hits the glass, does his job. Not many teams get offensive rebounds against Notre Dame with John Mooney standing under the basket, but Georgia Tech has five tonight. And they've cashed in for second chance points. They've got nine, and Evan Cole with an opportunity to make it 10 in his first half. The second game of the year for Evan Cole. He gets nine and nine against Elon. This guy can rebound. Cole makes them both. So eight seconds for Notre Dame. What are you drawing up? You're going to spread it out. Maybe a high ball screen, drag ball screen. It's going to be something quick. It's going to be a quick hitter. Hub showing off the handles. He didn't need eight seconds, only needed five. A heave at the buzzer. No good. But Prentice Hub delivers a two point lead for Notre Dame to take it to halftime. The Irish 8-2 when leading at the half, thanks to the sophomore Prentice Hub. They have that first half lead, but what a fun back and forth contest a Wednesday night in the ACC, and it has delivered a good second half coming your way after the State Farm Halftime Report. Doesn't that cloud right there look like a penguin? Really? That looks exactly like a busted pipe spewing water everywhere. To Georgia Tech in terms of James Banks, 6'10 with a 7'5 wingspan, doing a good job, not letting Mooney get good looks. Moses right on the inside. The defense of Georgia Tech has been very solid inside. Mike Bray has switched the defenses all night. Notre Dame comes out in a man to man. And, and Josh Paston talked about keep the ball. See how the ball didn't move? The ball was stuck like a piece of tape on their hand. You hear that expression all the time. Move the ball, be a ball mover. That ball went to the right side, it stayed there, and then it went out of bounds. Awful possession by Georgia Tech. But they get the ball right back, Jordan Usher. Oh my! Skying for the slam, Jordan Usher. That's a spark to start this second half. Great comeback after the turnover. And that's what you want to see as a coach. Guy makes a mistake, that's okay. Next play, and Jordan Usher was alert defensively and made a big time defensive play. That's when you know your team is locked in on the defensive end. Usher has been a welcome addition to Georgia Tech, transferred in from USC. Durham, an immediate answer in perfect position for that slam. But back to Usher for a second. Comes in, not available until December 18th. That's so tough to come into a team midseason, but he has steadily progressed, said Josh Pastor. You can practice all you want with your team. You have to play with your guys and get that rhythm and timing and cohesiveness. They worked on this in practice today, the drive-in and the throwback. Moses Wright was ready to take the roof off again. What a start to this second half, a hustle play, and it leads to a quite a slam. Jordan Usher, great anticipation, straight line push. He put it in. He cocked it back, almost missed the dunk. Coach wouldn't have been happy if that went flying off the rim. Not at all. It, it's all about getting the two points. But a big-time finish for Jordan Usher. 
for a guy that, again, hasn't found his rhythm because he came in midseason, that goes a long way for your confidence after you make a bad play that bounce back like that. Yeah, and, and Coach Passner wants him to be a catalyst on defense, find his niche on the offensive end with Alvarado and DeVoe. Jordan Usher is a very good straight line driver, solid athlete, and I like his defensive awareness. This, this helps Georgia Tech so much in the half court. Usher working on TJ Gibbs. Look at the way Usher just de defends and denies. Five seconds to shoot. Brent is hub. Deep three, steps back, can't hit it. Tell you what, that was a great defensive possession by Georgia Tech. Usher starting to feel it, takes it with confidence, but Banks unable to connect. Fluger transition three, off the mark. Notre Dame wants that shot. They want to push it on the miss and get that open look. Both teams starting to up the tempo. The spin cycle, but blocked away. Michael DeVoe comes up empty. Get it to Mooney. Bounce pass. Gibbs. Air ball. Now this pace favors Notre Dame. They want to go up and down without the whistle. Both teams going fast. Here's the problem. No buckets to show for it. And another brick. I mean, some of these shots, Coach, aren't close in transition. And that one was not wide open. I'll tell you what, though. John Mooney, they got to wait for him. And they got to make him touch the basketball. Both teams have there you go. struggled to score. There you go. That'll do it. Let him touch it. Big fella delivered. John Mooney on a rack attack. And Notre Dame back up by two. Listen, Mooney runs the floor all game long. He's the nation's leading rebounder. The man wants a touch. That time he got a punch after the touch. Three baskets all have been dunks in this second half. Make it four dunks and four baskets. A beautiful pass by Jose Alvarado. Georgia Tech continues to find points in the paint. Durham. Wasn't ready for the pass. John Mooney's first touch in the second half was highly productive. Takes it right to the shot blocker, James Banks. He had one thing on his mind once he put the ball in the deck. That's his first field goal of the game. He's trying to get going. Yeah, but he all, what you love about him, whether he scores or not, he always rebounds. And a travel called great defense that time. Mooney and Goodwin teaming up. And all I'm saying for the perimeter guys, Hub, Goodwin, Fluger, make sure that John Mooney touches it, especially when he's running the floor. Irish came in the best assist to turnover team in the country. So far, six assists, six turnovers. That's not the average they've grown accustomed to. Almost another turnover. Prentice Hub fires the three. That's off the mark. Usher attacks the rack again and delivers. We talk about pain points. It's coming by way of the drive, the post up, and the dump off. What a fake out in Prentice Hub, an easy two, an immediate answer. What a game. I mean, back and forth, each team playing to their strength. Notre Dame now switching up that defense again, going to the zone. Kickball. A kickball. We are going back and forth, bucket for bucket. And their drives right down Main Street. That's Jordan Usher. Now for Notre Dame, Prentice Hub tied up. It's into the second half. We're tied at 35 between Notre Dame and Georgia Tech. All the points of the second half have come from the paint. They've come on straight line drive. This Jordan Usher. Durham 
with a second chance point right there. How about John Mooney making a statement? How about this dish by Jose Alvarado? James Banks gathers and puts it up. This game is tied, and Notre Dame has tied Georgia Tech in paint points at 10 apiece. They have 18, I'm sorry, 10 apiece on the second chance points. Notre Dame has 18 paint points. Georgia Tech, 22. So that's where the game has really been a battle right now because each team cannot put the ball in the ocean. You could have been confused that you tuned into a dunk contest to start the second half. Jordan Usher playing with a lot of confidence. Can't connect on that one, though. Yeah, there's been some breakdowns defensively by each team. That's the, why there's so many drives and second chance points. It took 23 minutes for John Mooney to connect on his first field goal tonight. This time passing off the three, no good. Good block out that time by James Banks. I just don't see that enough. Guys blocking out on the defensive end. When you do that, you either get the board or you keep your man from getting the rebound. Alvarado on Mooney. That is a mismatch. Let's see if the junior point guard can cash in on it. Great find. DeVoe gets the bounce and it drops. Notre Dame started out in the zone in that possession. Then they went man and it looked a little loose. Hub goes right back the other way and is fouled on his way to the rim. Mike DeVoe is in the left corner for Georgia Tech. The scramble by Notre Dame and it's just too much space. There's no help on the drive. It gets all the way to the basket. One thing for sure, the tempo from both teams is definitely intensified in this second half. We're seeing a lot more shots. The percentages are pretty ugly. Real ugly. But I mean, good defense from both sides, too. At times. And then there's been some big-time breakdowns. Notre Dame right now, 21% behind the arc. Georgia Tech, not much better. Notre Dame 0 for 6 in the second half behind the arc. Alvarado steps into a three, rattles in and out. Trying to feed Mooney, working on Banks. Not much room to breathe, but drills right into him off the window and in. Look, John Mooney brings a high IQ to the game. He knows he can't shoot over James Banks. So what does he do? The old up and under. Show it to him, bring it back, and go around him. Risky pass pays off. Wide open, DeVoe cashes in. Michael DeVoe, he was just 2 of 12 from 3 in the last three games, up to 13 points tonight, and he's 2 for 4 from beyond the arc. And when you look at his jump shot, the mechanics are great. It's a pure stroke. Prentice Hub looking for the answer, can't come up with it, but a foul called on the rebound. It'll stay with Notre Dame. Check out John Mooney, one-on-one -on -one in the post against James Banks. Can't shoot over him, show it to him, bring it back. Up and under with the left hand, that was beautiful. And Michael DeVoe just hanging out at the three-point line. How about the release and rotation? Pure. Goodwin, he had the hot hand of the first half. Mooney, the tip-in doesn't fall. That's usually his bread and butter. Nice closeout by Georgia Tech. They came out hard on Goodwin. If you don't come hard on Notre Dame, they're going to release it quick. Mooney, another rebound. He has 10. Gibbs a three. No good. Oh for 7 Notre Dame from 3 in the second half. Gibbs a reach hit foul. Guarding Michael DeVoe. Too many good shooters. You know this is going to change, but this is the philosophy by Notre Dame. Open, keep shooting the ball. Don't stop shooting, keep shooting. I was going to ask you, though, in a game like this, do you think about abandoning the 3 just because of how good they've been with points of the paint? Not at all. You, you don't abandon it. You, you may drive a little bit more, but you don't stop shooting because you'll kill the confidence 
down the stretch. Long as the shots are open, Mike Bray's okay. Great pass, but just on the outstretched arm of Moses Wright. Thought Alvarado put it right on the money. ACC Network College Hoops coverage continues Saturday. Two great games for you. Florida State, Miami Hurricanes, and then Georgia Tech will be right back here in Atlanta against the reigning national champs. A loaded Saturday right here on the ACC Network. This game has delivered big time. Two pounds. One of his better games of the season for Michael DeVoe. A two-point Georgia Tech lead. Notre Dame with the basketball. All the points so far this half have come inside the paint. Notre Dame shooting 0 for 7 from 3 in the second half. Michael DeVoe picks up that foul. That's his first. Big concern coming in this game for Georgia Tech was their turnovers, averaging 16 a game. That's too many. That's too many, but right now they're, they're doing a pretty good job. They got it at nine. And, and they haven't been bad turnovers. They haven't been live ball turnovers. All right, stop exchanging numbers here and let's go, <laughs> fellas. It, Prentice Hub and Bubba Parham tangled up there. Inbound into Hub. Yep, they got DeVoe. Because DeVoe got, he got locked into his defender, he got locked into the moment, and for that particular second, Michael DeVoe. Picks up two fouls in a matter of yeah, six seconds. Because for that couple of seconds, he wasn't mentally tuned in. And that can happen in a heartbeat. You're looking at guys that are 19, 20, 21 years old. You want to play with toughness and you want to play with emotion, but you can't be emotional during the game. And a travel called on Durham. Seventh turnover for Notre Dame. That's uncharacteristic from this team. Yeah, they usually keep it under 10. In fact, for the last six years, Notre Dame has been number one or number two in the nation. In not turning it over. DeVoe taking it right into Hub. Gets the foul and the basket. That's just one-on-one -on -one defense. Hub trying, he gets beat. Mooney helps a little bit, but DeVoe in just way too deep. Once he gets that low, you gotta run somebody at him. You're not really concerned about the three-point shot if you're Notre Dame. Maybe the help's gotta come a little bit earlier. You know, if you're a big, you don't wanna help up because then he dumps it down. But you gotta take a stand. You gotta sit and slide defensively if you're Notre Dame. Mike Bray going with a smaller lineup now. John Mooney in at the five. And that's where he gets his best offense, Notre Dame. And Mike Bray, nice move. Muscles his way to the hoop and delivers. Slow, patient, and under control. John Mooney. It took him 23 minutes to make his first field goal. Since then, he's knocked another two in. What a take. The blow by Jose Alvarado. An immediate answer. Again, if you're going to get beat, there's got to be help. A foul called. Goodwin was tripped on his way to the rim. Should have been an easy layup. Take a look at the Georgia Tech head coach after the last Yellow Jackets basket. Fired up. His team is a five-point lead. It's their largest of the night, which shows you what a close game it's been when you five points is your largest lead. Looked like a dance move from the 1990s. <laughs> I mean, he's, he's intense. Mike Bray is, too. Two of the finest coaches in the game. We're in the middle of January. School is starting. Conference play is it's a grind right now. It's like a heavyweight fight. Every game has so much meaning. Every possession is so intense. 
guys know what's at stake. You slide up or you slide down in the conference standings. Nice pass. Moses right after a couple of sweet passes. Delivers inside points in the paint. Continues to be the name of the game for Georgia Tech. And it's come off a dribble penetration. Goodwin buries a three. Dane Goodwin quiets this Atlanta crowd. Well, the first one for the Irish in the second half. See if Notre Dame goes back to him in the next possession. Alvarado again, a perfect pass that Moses Wright finishes easily. But I love when Josh passed it. Look at him. Trying to spark up his team and the crowd. Look, he put a playmaker in the middle of the zone. Fabulous idea. Alvarado can score a find, and he made the assist. The hesitation from Gibbs, all he needed. And this is just a back and forth. You just said it. Heavyweight fight Wednesday night in the ACC, and these two teams trading punches right now. Alvarado, so shifty. And they say he stepped on the end line, so it'll be Notre Dame basketball. Crowd doesn't like it. They thought he was bumped yeah, out Fluger, of bounds. Yeah, Fluger gave him a little, little bump with the leg, but if you're Alvarado, you don't want to get caught that deep. Let's see if Dane Goodwin gets another shot off here. He leads Notre Dame at scoring tonight with 14 points. Sophomores come off the bench at three for three for three. Gibbs on the drive, throws it off the window and in. Same spot. Back to back baskets for the senior. TJ Gibbs willing Notre Dame back within one. He comes in, he flies in, stops under control. Beautiful job using the glass. Georgia Tech has made their last five baskets looking for another great defense John Mooney got a piece of it that was excellent defense by Mooney helped out on the ball screen got back to banks setting the pick there for Gibbs feet inside hub muscling it up and it somehow goes down Brent is hub and Notre Dame takes the lead how about the toughness of the Irish on the road making a comeback Desperately needing a conference win. One in four near the bottom of the ACC right now. And they've done it. Last possession with their defense. This one by scoring at the paint. It's not been threes. Look at Hub. Baseline cut. Guys all over him. Wills it up off the glass. Notre Dame with some serious heartbeat. In the, the second half. The question weighing on Notre Dame's fans' mind and Mike Bray's mind is, we've been tight all game. Can we close it out? They were tight against NC State, tight against Louisville. Could not close it out. Eight minutes to go. Let's see what they can deliver on the road. Bubba Parham hesitates, goes up, and cashes in. Georgia Tech back up by one. And a timeout taken by Josh Pastor. You can't beat this. In the ACC, both teams trading punches. A fun finish coming. His defense. He's had 10 straight double-doubles, looking for 11, which would tie Luke Arangote. He's just a basket away, already with 10 rebounds. Both teams red hot right now in the second half. Notre Dame's made their last five baskets. Georgia Tech, their last six. Just. Playing out of concepts, five behind the line, random ball screens, dribble handoffs, and reads. Gibbs right into the teeth of the defense and draws the foul. We step aside again. You won't want to miss this finish. Want to lean on late in the game. From Georgia Tech, I'm looking for Mike DeVoe. 16 points, but he's been efficient. Six for 12. Overall, two for four from three. And from Notre Dame, I'm looking at Dane Goodwin. Again, he's been efficient tonight as well. Five for ten overall. Three for three behind the arc. Both of those guys have been the hot hand for their respective team. And Gibbs makes the second, so this game once again tied for the tenth time. 
This time at 51. Yeah, T.J. Gibbs played his high school ball at Seton Hall Prep. He brings a toughness, maturity. He just doesn't get rattled on the floor. His two older brothers played professionally overseas. Parham tried to loft it up. John Mooney there again for the takeaway. And T.J. Gibbs' is dad, Temple Gibbs, he played football at Temple. How about that? Athletic family. Love that. Final seven minutes of regulation. Notre Dame's accustomed to close games. Their last four losses are combined 11 points. T.J. Gibbs says it's not going to be a loss tonight. Big time bucket, and the Irish back up two. T.J. Gibbs just understands the game so well, and he's confident in himself. Banks the immediate answer. James Banks, the senior, the basket, and an opportunity to take the lead from the foul line after the foul. Look, Georgia Tech has been running this high ball screen all night long. Watch Alvarado, a little wraparound pass. When Banks rolls down the lane, the weak side help has to come over. And in that sequence, Dane Goodwin's got to come over and pick up that pass. Banks shooting only 65% for the foul line. Can't convert. They've gotten beat on that high ball screen a bunch in this game. See how quick Notre Dame moves the ball. Mooney for three. Way off the mark. Jordan Usher, great take, does not roll down. The Irish took a stand defensively. One and done, so crucial down the stretch. Hub, a three, he's got it! Prentice Hub buries a big time three. Now there's a guy who plays with great offensive confidence. Played in the WCAC out of high school. Played at Gonzaga High. The Steve Turner. Timeout taken by Josh Pastor. Let's see if it's a two or a three. They ruled it a two. Well, actually, uh, originally, you see the official right there gives it a three. They're going to review this. That looks like a three to me. Yeah, both feet behind the line. I was starting to get nervous. I called it a three. It was right in front of us. I might need classes like you if his, if his <laughs> foot was on the line. Watch this. His right foot clearly behind, and his left foot is a little bit behind his right foot. So yeah, it's a three. That's three. For a sophomore, Prentice Hub playing with so much confidence as of late. 13 points tonight, came in the last three games, averaging 18. And he's a good assist maker. He can play that combo spot for Mike Bray. The playmaker or the shot maker. Georgia Tech looking to punch back. Much it better defense that time on the ball screen, excuse me. With Alvarado passing off the answer. But see, Alvarado made the right read. Big wasn't open, so you throw it back to what they call the lift man. Closeout wasn't quick enough. Eight assists tonight for Jose Alvarado. Hub keeps it alive. Goodwin, ball fake, a three, does not drop. Great look. That's what you want as we tick to five minutes to go in regulation. Still tied. Under, under. Under, under. Alvarado takes this one himself. Can't connect. Well, if you go under a ball screen on Jose Alvarado, he's going to shoot it. Hub trying to stay hot, and he drills it. Prentice Hub. Shooting lights out in this second half. Another three. He's up to 16. Bunch of his shots come from three. 60%. So if you're Georgia Tech, you've got to put your body on him. Get a hand up. DeVoe kept it alive with the smooth handles, and Georgia Tech pulls back within one. Mike DeVoe, he gets a little crafty in the paint. 
uses that shot fake. Prentice Hub is feeling it right now. Risky pass, knocked away. Moses Wright emerges with it. Attacking, what a slam! Moses Wright fires Georgia Tech in front with authority. Gibbs will quiet this Georgia Tech crowd down at a timeout taken by Mike Bray. How much fun is this? Incredible back and forth action in the ACC. Yellow Jackets stinging on defense. Moses Wright with the steal and the push and the dunk. Watch Hub. He comes right off a ball screen or right to the three-point line. His last dribble is a quick, hard dribble. He's rising up, and he's got a quick trigger. These teams are red hot right now. A combined 19 of the last 23 have gone down. Wasn't that way in the first half. No. It was a it. slugfest in the first half. Good defense by Notre Dame on that. Took away the roll. Alvarado, eyes on the timer, eight to shoot. DeVoe on the drive, takes it in, two on the shot clock, has to throw it up. Fluger ripped it away. Could have been two points for Prentice Hub, but they call the shot clock violation. That was sensational help defense by Zero. Rex Fluger. He just went in there, ripped it out of the offensive player's hands. Big time defensive play. Graduate here at Notre Dame. Mooney keeps it alive. Battling with Banks somehow, some way, puts it in. And with that basket, he ties Luke Herringote with 11 straight double doubles, most in Notre Dame history. So the last two possessions for Notre Dame. Fluger, the grad senior, and Mooney, the senior, making big plays. Count it, plus the foul. Moses Wright, an immediate answer. Not much Dane Goodwin could do on that, but how about John Mooney? Look at, look at Wright trying to get closer. He's putting his shoulder right into Dane Goodwin. Dane tried to draw the charge. Can't convert the three-point play, so it's a one-point Notre Dame lead, 2.20 to go. The Irish have been in these type of ball games all year long, trying to close this one out. Goaltending the call on the Prentice Hub layup. The hub is cat quick. And you got to respect the three-point shot when you get too close. He's got the blow-by dribble. Georgia Tech with only one timeout. Two minutes to go in regulation, trailing by three. Into Moses Wright, again draws the foul. Two coming at the line. The problem for the junior is only shooting 55% for the foul line this season. Notre Dame needs to stay a little tighter in that zone. You have to know where the shooter could be, but Banks and Wright, our guys are not gonna shoot it deep. You wanna stay tight on them because they could finish at the rim. So what do Jay Billis, LaFonso Ellis, Seth Greenberg all have in com common? They're all bald, and we bring you Bald Man on Campus Friday, 9 o'clock Eastern time, <laughs> right here on the ACC Network. Well, that's one group I'm glad I'm not part of. <laughs> I thought you said you didn't want me to bring up your hair the rest of the show. No, I can bring it up, though. Oh, okay. Love those guys, but I don't want to be part of that club. Buckle up. A one-point game in the ACC. Notre Dame trying to close it out. Mike Bray said they've struggled to do it all season long. 
hub. A lot of contact, nothing called. He taps it up and in, and it's a three-point lead for the Irish. What a play by Hub. He got stopped. He took the step through, missed it, went to go get it. Outstanding. 20 points for the sophomore to lead all scorers. Moses Wright, a three. Can't connect. It's not the shot that Josh Pastner wanted or that Georgia Tech needed. Mike Bray takes a timeout. This Notre Dame team has led in three of their last four losses in the last two minutes. They've got a minute and 19 seconds to exercise those demons and close this game out on the road. Look at Hub, a step through, maybe a little shoulder, but how about the tap? Went after it. The 6'3 sophomore crunching it from deep and in the paint. He's got 20 points tonight, leading scorer for Notre Dame. The sophomore has delivered 15 of those 20 points in this second half. He has been the hot hand for Notre Dame. If you're inside the Mike Bray huddle, how do you close out this game? Something they failed to do for most of this season. How do you come away with a win? Well, first, you got to make sure that you're alert defensively. You can't give up pain points or second chance points. If Georgia Tech is going to score on you right now, it's got to be behind the arc or a jump shot, a long two or a three. Then you got to clean up the glass. Georgia Tech, you want to continue to look for Mike DeVoe behind the line. Banks are right inside. That high ball screen for Georgia Tech has been really good with Jose Alvarado and James Banks. Then they bring the shooter behind it. It's been effective tonight. Notre Dame down the stretch has made 12 of their last 15 shots trying to close it out on the road. You asked me at halftime when Notre Dame was not shooting well, do you keep shooting? And I told you, you got to keep shooting the ball because you have a team of shooters and shot makers. Notre Dame believes in their offense. It's been fantastic in the second half. Trying to extend it to a two possession lead. Deep three. It's good. TJ Gibbs from downtown Atlanta buries it. He's made some big shots in the second half. But that is absolutely the biggest. Foul called before the made basket from DeVoe, and Gibbs stays down, grasping that right leg. Gibbs trying to walk that off. And he is waving off his coaches. T.J. Gibbs, wide open. Look at the quick catch and shoot. All the Notre Dame guys on the perimeter. Look what it means to them. Yeah, it means everything. But the guys from Notre Dame, when they catch the ball, they are shot ready. They are thinking about shooting it. And there's no hesitation. Now, if you're Notre Dame, you have to expect pressure by Georgia Tech. Some sort of press coming up right now. So if you're Notre Dame, you're thinking about your press offense. And if you're Georgia Tech, you're thinking about extending your defense. James Banks, the senior, steps up, makes the front end of the one and one. Gets them both. And there's the pressure. It's a one, two, one, one. Notre Dame breaks it quickly. Look how high and wide the Irish are. Their Moses offense Wright. is way up there. Called for the foul on T.J. Gibbs. Gibbs will shoot one and one now. The senior Gibbs, along with Prentice Hub, they have willed this Notre Dame team in this second half. They've combined for 27 of the Irish's 38. Gibbs with that deep three. You know, if you're a coach, you're thinking, why is he shooting it that deep? But all good when it goes down. And he's 90% this season from the line. 
That's the guy you want standing there if you're Notre Dame. One and one. Makes it. So if you're Notre Dame, don't foul. And they do a great job of not committing fouls, but you don't want to stop this game. Now you want to just get back, keep them in front, locate DeVoe. Six-point lead, DeVoe trying to cut into it. He does. And Josh Pastner takes his final timeout. A four-point lead for Notre Dame. Irish will have the basketball. Well, smart play by Michael DeVoe. He felt the defense up on him to take away the three. He quickly put it on the deck, scores, timeout Georgia Tech. They can set up their press. Obviously, you try and get the steal immediately. If you don't, I imagine you have to come in really quick with that foul. Absolutely. You want to put, I think, your biggest guy on the ball, James Banks. Trying to get a trap somewhere in the corner. One trap, but once they throw out, you have to stop the clock and foul. Mike Braves' message to us when we spoke with him at shoot-around was we have to close games. We've been in position to get some wins, but we need to close games. Well, it's been tight all night, but his team leading by four under 30 seconds ago, a perfect opportunity for this team to show they can close a game. Yeah, he nailed it, Mike Bray. And they worked on end-of-game situations today at shoot-around. Side out of bounds, five seconds or less. Baseline out of bounds. This team is prepared for end-of-game situations. They need one to go their way this season. Tech substitution number 12. All wins in the ACC are important, but Mike Bray said you'll think about this one a little longer because they've got a bye coming up after this. Yeah, Georgia That's Tech, it. I'm sorry, Georgia Tech went small, switched everything. Here's the trap. And the foul comes in. Prentice Hub heads to the line. I like that call by Josh Pastner. Basically a five-guard lineup trying to get that steal by switching, and you still get the trap and the foul. Prentice Hub at the line. Mentioned that bye week upcoming, so you'll think about this one if you're a Notre Dame fan or player for a while. Prentice Hub for a one and one. Extends the lead to five. For Georgia Tech, get it in quick. Don't look for the three. Look for the drive right to the rim. And then match up right away trying to get a steal. Up gets both. Yellow Jackets out of timeouts. And that's why you have to go to the rim. Try to create contact, get a foul. Usher goes right at Mooney. Lays it up and in. 20 seconds left. And Prentice Hub heads to the foul line. And he's tonight's player of the game. Brought to you by Zaxby's. And for good reason, Prentice Hub in this second half, 17 points. 22 overall, but boy, he was a force for Notre Dame down the stretch. And he, he did so behind the arc with quick threes, but I love the way he got into the paint with grit, finished his layups, rebounded his missed layup. He was relentless on offense tonight. And most importantly, he's been money from the foul line. Yeah, 90% this season. He want the ball in his hands on the press offense. He's made the last four. Keeps the lead at six. Do you go three here if you're Georgia Tech? No, you go straight rim. Because that's what you're going to get. Yep, DeVoe gets it. Oh, the foul comes in. This time, Dane Goodwin, another sophomore heading to the foul line. 12.4 remaining. Anytime it's a two-possession game and you can't get a clean look from a three quickly, you got to take that too. Now this time, you may want to look for the three. And they're in the double bonus, so two shots coming for Dane Goodwin. Sophomore was big for Notre Dame tonight when they were struggling offensively early. 
Goodwin came off the bench, knocked down some timely threes. Ten seconds to go. Georgia Tech down five. Alvarado straight to the rim, and it's a one-possession game. Notre Dame looking to inbound. They have Hub, and he's fouled with 4.9 seconds. Georgia Tech got the, the easy basket, but they weren't ready for that inbound pass. Prentice Hub it was uncontested. Well, Notre Dame was so spread out. Georgia Tech was trying to find their man or find a man. Mike Bray, the master, with the press offense tonight. Guys in the right spot. Such a great passing team. So unselfish. They take such good care of the ball. And that's so important down the stretch in big games. Not beating yourself. Two shots coming for Prentice Hub. One make, and it's a two-possession game. No good. Okay. If he misses this, obviously it's a three. It's a three no matter what. The Notre Dame. If he makes this and you know Notre Dame, do not foul. Do not foul if he makes this. He does. Two possession game. Georgia Tech has to hurry. A heave. It'll be the last shot of the game. It goes begging, and Mike Bray and Notre Dame leave Atlanta with a critical ACC road win. The first time they've won in this building since 2015. Notre Dame showed some tremendous offensive grit in the second half. Didn't shoot it well in the first half, but boy, did they come on strong in the second half. Four guys in double figures.